It's not so bad, surely, to believe in moral codes handed down to us from the good book. Doesn't the Bible give us a moral framework in which to live? Well, no. The holy texts are of dubious origin and veracity, and they're internally contradictory. And when we look closely, we find a system of morals which any civilized person today should surely find poisonous. The Old Testament is in every church and synagogue throughout the world and is the root of Judaism, Christianity and Islam. If your brother, the son of your father or of your mother, or your son or daughter, or the spouse whom you embrace, tries to secretly seduce you, saying, let us go and serve other gods. This is God's advice on what to do to a friend or family member who suggests you believe in another deity. You must kill him. Your hand must strike the first blow in putting him to death. You must stone him to death, since he has tried to divert you from Yahweh, your God. The God of the Old Testament has got to be the most unpleasant character. He is a key character. part of the Jewish, Catholic, Islam, Mormon, and Christian religions. Abraham's name is also literally interpreted as High Father. In Hebrew, it is El Elyon, also meaning Most High. And both Abraham and Saturn are sons of Terah. In the legend, Saturn was born from Terra, or the Earth. Abraham is said to have gone to the site of Mecca and built the Kaaba stone. Today, it's a giant brick square that has a black sheet draped over it. In Islam, it is customary to trek once to twice a year to the site and walk around the stone seven times. They do not know that they are performing theater and that they represent the rings of Saturn. You can research many of the names of the Father God, El, Baal, Adad, Kronos, Kronos, Osiris, Tammuz, Addis, Adonis, Adad, Teshub, Set, Zeus, Jupiter, Enki, Dionysus, Yahweh, Moloch, Neruta, just to name a few. Most were associated with a sky father god figure like Zeus. Marukan is the most ancient god of India. He was god of space and time and chaos. He was known as the way to wisdom, and his star was the hexagram. Now, what we're looking at here is the hexagon on the north pole of Saturn, okay? Now, as you can see, it's going in an anti-clockwise fashion. We'll get back to that later. We're going to start with this. Now, Saturn, as we all know in astronomical terms, is the lord of space and time, okay? It's meant to be like the time regulator, if you will, the god of time and space. Now, this 2D image is actually a cube. It's a 2D image, hexagon, of a 3D cube. Uh, anybody who knows how that works will understand it's a cube. So, look at that, it's going in an anti-clockwise position. Okay, direction, sorry. And I want you to remember this for the little piece of uh, evidence I'm going to show you in a moment. I want you to remember that this is going anti-clockwise. The planets will be probably spinning clockwise and then it's got its rings that are either moving the other way or standing still, okay? So we've got three directions on this one planet, okay? Now let's just um, remember it's time and space. So, first clip. These are the Muslims going round the Kabbalah. Yeah, at Mecca. Look at that, folks. They're going the same direction. Now they've been doing this for millennia, <laughs> okay? Going round the black cube in an anti-clockwise fashion. Now remember that Cassini photograph of Saturn wasn't took until 2006. It was meant to be a big surprise to all. So we didn't know about that until 2006. Yet here they are, anti-clockwise around the black cube. In astrology, Saturn is the planet of structure, respect, obedience, tradition, restriction, control, authority, time, matter, fear, poverty, and death. It rules old people, authority figures, corporations, traditional institutions, the law, and all rules. Tell me that doesn't sound like some place we know of right now. <laughs> I mean, when I look around, that's almost to a T. There are three widely spread sim symbols for Saturn. The sickle, the black cube, and the ring. Saturn's rings. That's what it symbolizes. Um, 
The sickle is, of course, an instrument of death. Is depicted with the ancient Greek god Kronos, the god of time. As we can see, both symbols are part of the astrological meaning of Saturn. It was also the emblem of communism, like the sickle and hammer. And also, you remember that movie, The Transformers? The whole premise of the movie was about the Allspark, uh, the Black Cube. Okay, that movie came out on 777. Simple nu numerology, and it was July 7, 2007, and it was advertised at 777. Simple numerology is that 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 21. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 in scientific notation, simple algebra basic geometry, uh, you know, to the third power, the third exponent is also known as cubed. The ancient name of Saturn was, as mentioned, L, E L. Um, it is the reason why those that were used by El were called elites. In fact, words like elect, elder, elevated, Elohim, temple, circle, gospel, apostle, disciple, evangelist, all derive from the cult of El. And this whole El thing is, I mean, this is huge. Like, this, you can go on and on for days about uh, what's going on with this whole El thing. Uh, another image for Saturn is the black cube. In all occult traditions, the cube is a, a symbol of matter, reverse of the sphere, which represents spirit. What is the connection to, of the cube to Saturn? Recent pictures from NASA reveals a constant formation of a hexagon on Saturn's north, north pole. Saturn is the sixth planet from the sun. Saturn Day is the sixth day of the week, and now NASA is receiving images of the Saturn hexagon, six-sided atmosphere, atmospheric formation on Saturn's poles. The sixth chakra of the human body is the energy system is the, is the third eye. The king with the box! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Now it's my turn, maybe? The box says no. big deal, right? But it does get strange. For in the headquarters of AIM, behind locked doors, is an object within an ionic shell. The most powerful device in the world. A cosmic cube. Well, I mean, the, the, the most interesting thing, of course, is that, that the, um, the scientists in Germany that developed all of this stuff are all members of a group called the Saturnian Society. And um, they, I, I'm not, you know, we don't really know all that much about the Saturnian Society, but um, I just find it interesting that, you know, they named the rocket the Saturn V, even though it was going to the moon, which was strange. And, um, uh, but, but more interesting than that is the obsession that NASA has had with Saturn. And, uh, uh, you know, in, in including, you know, sending the, the big ship that's out there now, uh, uh, collecting thousands and thousands of images of Saturn and its moons. And, um, you know, you, you just got to wonder what's, what's going on. Another interesting thing about, about this is in 2005, there was a TV series in the United States called Revelations. And it only lasted six shows. It was a summer replacement. Really wasn't a very good show. And it was financed by the Catholic Church. And in this show, Bill Pullman is a scientist, and there's a some beautiful actress. I forget her name. She's playing a nun. Believe me, the most beautiful nun you've ever seen. And um, they're chasing the Antichrist, okay, all over the world, who's about to destroy the world. And in the film, it turns out that the Antichrist has a secret box. And uh, inside, uh, on, the, on the front of the box is a picture of Saturn. And there's a moon right next to the picture of Saturn. And uh, Bill Pullman points at the moon and he says, it's a black moon. He says, what's this? And the nun says, that's the black moon of Saturn. That's where the Antichrist lives. Well, this is one year after they uh, took the pictures of, um, of um, uh, Iapetus, okay, which is a black moon, uh, about six months after Hoagland came out with his brilliant analysis of, of Iapetus. And um, at the very end of the series, they, they defeat the Antichrist, but you know, they've got to have a sequel because it's a TV show. And so they're standing out on a cliff overlooking the ocean. They've won their battle against the Antichrist, blah, blah, blah. And they look up at a star. The camera pulls, zooms into the star. Turns out the star is really Saturn. And the very last shot of the show is this black moon rising over the frame, covering the frame. Okay? So this is all very odd because here's the thing. The place where the black monolith is in the book 2001 A Space Odyssey is on the moon Iapetus. And you start putting this together and you realize that these guys must have had knowledge, these German guys, must have had knowledge about Saturn from something. But they knew that there was something about Saturn. Kubrick was going to Saturn in 2001. In the book, they actually go to Saturn. He changed it to Jupiter, said he couldn't make the rings look realistic enough. I don't buy it. I think they came in and they said, no, 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 you can't make it Saturn. It's too obvious. It's just too clear.